from KTAB News. In coordination with the Abilene Chamber of Commerce and Workforce Solutions of West Central Texas, this is Coronavirus Help in the Big Country. Presented by First Bank Texas. Well, good afternoon and welcome to our forum, Coronavirus Help in the Big Country, presented by First Bank Texas. First, we would like to welcome those watching on TV and those watching online. We are dedicating this time to help people and businesses navigate help during the coronavirus pandemic and answer your questions about employment and business. Our panelists today are Doug Peters, CEO, President of the Abilene Chamber of Commerce, Mary Ross, Executive Director for the Workforce Solutions of West Central Texas, and David Smith, Regional Director of Texas Tech Small Business Development Center. Well, first of all, welcome to our studio. Thank you all very much for coming in. They're sitting just over to the left of me. And I want to go around the, her the horn. First of all, let's start with Mary Ross. Mary, why don't you explain uh, to our audience what, what it is that you do? Well, at Workforce Solutions, we help employers find people who need jobs and job seekers find jobs. We're not the unemployment office, but we will try and help folks with their unemployment insurance. Next, we go to Doug Peters, CEO of the Abilene Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Mr. Peters, you were part of our last forum on coronavirus. Why don't you reintroduce yourself to I'd be happy everybody to. who's watching. My name is Doug Peters. I'm the President and Chief Executive Officer of the Abilene Chamber of Commerce, and we're a 112-year-old business association here in Abilene uh, with service to those counties around Taylor. Uh, we represent nearly 1,300 businesses here uh, and provide them uh, in normal times with a plethora of services, but our core business is business advocacy. Uh, but we're known for networking, we're known for a number of different things. So um, all of our work continues uh, in a different format uh, in large part, but we've been very active on the advocacy part. We're still working for our members, uh, but we have removed the firewall that uh, has existed between our membership uh, and the general business community, and we're doing everything we can to make sure that resources are made available to any business without regard to chamber membership through this crisis. Thank you, Mr. Peters. And next, David Smith, Regional Director of the Texas Tech Small Business Development Center here in Abilene. Hello, I'm David Smith from the Texas Tech Small Business Development Center here in Abilene. <coughs> our, uh, our primary purpose uh, is we serve the, uh, like Doug do, uh, does, we serve the surrounding communities around in Abilene and, and, and the 17 surrounding counties com we commonly refer to as the big country. We primarily work uh, uh, in our regular, uh, when things aren't like they are now, uh, helping entrepreneurs and new businesses start up, and then we also service existing businesses to help them expand and grow. And uh, we, we uh, uh, prepare financial plans and financial forecasts and aid people in seeking uh, funding, whether through uh, uh, SBA or conventional bank loans and uh, 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 private investment. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful opportunity. Uh, uh, we love what we do there and, and look forward to working with our clients and uh, especially during this, the, this critical time uh, in our nation's uh, 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 situation. It does sound like we have all the right people for this forum here in our studio. And I want to start off by basically setting the stage. The headline today is 6.6 .6 million Americans filed for unemployment last week. And that was just reported today. That's the headline all across America. Locally, 72 groups have canceled meetings and events so far at a cost of $6.2 million to the local business economy. That is a huge number for Abilene, further setting the stage. And a little bit later on, for those of you who are watching live April 2nd, you will see on KTAB News at 6 and 10, a story by Mercedes Hernandez, how the oil industry has been affected even further by the coronavirus. As you know, it was already affected before the coronavirus, let's say, came to town. Why don't we go ahead and start off with our first question. This question is for Mary. How many layoffs have we already seen in the Abilene in the big country? Do you know that number? Is, uh, is this a number you carry we, off the top of your head these days? Do, we do have a good idea. We know that there's been over 750 individuals who've lost their jobs. Those are just the folks we know and over 30 businesses 
Um, we know that our numbers for our region, that we've had over 900 folks who have filed for unemployment insurance. Mm -hmm. We think there's a whole lot more who haven't gotten through um, compared to 113 during the month of February. So that gives you an idea of the contrast in the numbers that clearly are going to be really large. And just so we're clear on that number, you said last month it was just over 100 and now it's what? Over 900. Over 900. And that's just within uh, over a little month and a half, right? Just in, just in the month of March. Just in the month of just March. Just in the month of March, that yes. Is. So this next number, uh, um, uh, question for David. What has been the impact to small business? We can imagine that they're having to worry about uh, about labor costs and all kinds of stuff. David, can you answer that question yeah, for us? Uh, the, the thing that we're seeing is, is, is businesses are getting hit from two fronts. You know, we're, we're facing an, an, an existential uh, uh, situation, not only in our healthcare industry, with our, our health and, and, and of our families and, and uh, communities, uh, but our businesses are also suffering. The main uh, thing that we're seeing uh, issues with at, at this time are, first of all, loss of revenue, and, uh, and the inability to, uh, for businesses due to loss of revenue to be able to turn around and pay their employees. Uh, and of course, that's the first thing that everybody wants to keep on. They want to look after their employees, uh, but they just don't, if you don't have revenue, uh, you know, money coming in, you can't turn around and pay your bills and pay your employees. And that's the biggest crisis we're seeing right now. And it's, it's day after day, we have people calling and saying, I need some help. Uh, what can you do for me? And, and that's what we're here to, to talk about. Got to pay payroll. Yes, you got to pay a payroll. All right. And it's hard to do when you when you when you when, when your business is basically closed down. When you don't have an income coming right. in. Mm -hmm. Well, our this next question is is for Doug Peters. This not only affects affects the small businessmen, but but the large businesses mm -hmm. here in town, and maybe even so, uh, more so because there's more people there. Uh, you're right, uh, Victor, and, and let me just tell you, uh, you mentioned uh, the situation with oil. Let me tell you that uh, there is some, some news that's floated around. I haven't verified it, but we're hopeful that uh, the Trump administration just today has reached an agreement with the Saudis and with Russia uh, to uh, cut back on some of their production to bring our prices back up here domestically. So we're, we're very uh, encouraged by that and hope it to be true. Um, but there are uh, really just so many uh, resources that are available to businesses of every size. We're working with members ranging in size from one as a sole proprietor all the way up to our largest manufacturer of 600. Uh, and uh, we're trying to make sure that we are recommending or advising them on the best ways that, uh, uh, that they can continue their operation, continue to uh, get product out the door, while at the same time protecting the interests of their employees, their bottom line, and certainly uh, their, their, um, uh, you know, the, the interest uh, of, of what they, they do every day. So, um, you know, there are several things. If, if folks go to the Chamber's new uh, resource page, Victor, it is um, www.businessresourceabilene.com. And we have collected, with the help of Mary, with the help of David, uh, and so many others, uh, great, best practices uh, and they're out there. There it is um, on your screen now. Yeah. Uh, and one of them is uh, what we call the COVID-19 compliant business partner and it sets out 10 principles that uh, are voluntary for folks. They can look at that, they can understand that, you know, maybe splitting uh, their workforce into shifts. So if someone is exposed, they don't lose their entire workforce, but they're able to put another workforce, a cross-trained workforce in while those folks are sidelined. Um, but uh, I have to tell you that uh, in 34 years of doing what I do, having partners uh, in Workforce Solutions in the Small Business Development Center uh, and so many others, Abilene is well cared for as it relates to uh, resources available and the ability to get them to the right people at the right time. And I think that's, this is exactly what people are watching this for, uh, for ideas just like the one you gave us, Mr. Peters. Maybe there's a way that you could take your workforce and go to shifts that maybe you haven't had before, maybe a, an early shift, a middle shift, a, a late shift, and you separate your workforce. That's exactly what you're talking about, right? That's exactly right. And of course, we want to implore all of our businesses in the community to continue to practice health hygiene, do all those things that the Centers for Disease Control uh, and uh, the Abilene-Taylor County Health District are uh, recommending. 
Um, to get through this, to flatten the curve as we all hear, uh, we have to make sure uh, that everybody is doing their part. Uh, and there are some folks who really, I, I don't think yet understand or believe that this is a real crisis. Uh, it's going to continue to be a crisis until we all sort of adhere to the same set of rules uh, and get this thing behind us. Well, and whether or not it's a healthcare crisis, as most people believe it is now, if nothing else, it is an economic Absolutely. crisis because of what this healthcare crisis, if it is or not, has caused already. So that's one way of looking at it. Let's talk about the job uh, scenario in, in Abilene. And this is for Mary Ross. What is the current employment scenario in Abilene and are many jobs available? And then of those jobs, what kind of a jobs are, what kind of jobs are they right now? Well, thanks, Victor. Yes, um, there are still jobs available. Uh, you can go to www.workintexas.com, which is the state's website. If you go out there and look, you'll see there's over 500 job openings available, uh, mainly in manufacturing, healthcare, law enforcement, criminal justice, um, essential services. Um, there, there's still jobs out there. We know some of those employers are holding off on their hiring right now. Um, but there are other employers that are still actively looking for workers and are in desperate need of workers. So we strongly urge people to go and look at workintexas.com and register if they're looking for a job. And, uh, and I'll talk about some other options we have coming up later. Okay, well, and you, you've got to be coming across those people who maybe um, are not laid off, but their hours are cut, or, or something happening at work that they're not going to work. And, and, and I guess the, the rock in the hard place right now is, okay, I can, I can get a job, there are jobs available, but because of coronavirus, do I go get a job? Are you coming across that question, that question a lot? Um, actually... <laughs> We've talked to some of our employers and they said their attendance rates in some areas are an all-time high where people feel safe and secure at work. So if you're able to provide a safe and healthy work environment and you're ensuring that your employees have a good work environment, I think they will continue to come to work because people want to work. They're concerned about going home and not going back to work. and so. We're finding more people that are concerned about they've lost their job or their hours are reduced, but they're really wanting to go to work. And Mary Ross, I'm just going to bombard you with questions real quick oh. with Workforce Solutions. This is really the number one question that people are asking us prior to this forum. What unemployment benefits are available to those who have just lost their jobs? I know there's a lot of uh, people saying they just can't get through, but that's another issue. What uh, what benefits are there for people? Well, of course, they can go um, online or call, and we know there's a lot of frustration. Those are actually the majority of the calls that we're getting right now are people who have tried to call and can't get through and have tried to file, and the website has crashed, and we know that's a challenge um, because the Workforce Commission's website is just overwhelmed. Um, with hundreds of thousands of folks trying to file for unemployment insurance. But if you can file online, you know, we recommend you do that during the odd hours. Um, there's not as many people trying to fi file at 2 o'clock in the morning. So think about filing online at odd times. Keep calling. Be patient. The benefits that are available um, to folks are the regular unemployment benefits as well as some extended benefits. There's no job search requirements right now. Um, and, and it's retroactive. So if you lose your job and it takes you several days to get through, don't worry. Um, the benefits will be retroactive to the time that you lost your job. Um, I'm told in my ear I should be asking about the chat box. The chat, there is a chat box um, on the website at, at the Workforce Commission, and that's another way to ask questions. It's not a way to file for unemployment insurance, but it is a good thing to look at. And we also strongly recommend um, following the Workforce Commission on Facebook. Um, they put updates out on their Facebook page regularly. They are trying to add more lines. They are open from 8 to 6, Monday through Saturday at the call center. So you 
You should try calling early in the morning, call closer to 6, um, call multiple times. If you need to call, you may have to call 10 or 15 times, but keep trying to get through. Yeah, you can contact us as a last resort and we'll try and, if you're having trouble, and we'll try and give you a few pointers, but we, we don't have any inside uh, information any differently and we don't have any special way to connect with the Workforce Commission. So all we can tell people is um, be patient and keep calling and you, you will get through and they will process your claim. Make sure you say it's COVID-19 related. Uh, when you when you call or when you file your your claim and, and we also say give your email address if you don't provide an email address then the only contact they have is your mailing address and it will take longer to get information to you so be sure to give your email address and check your email and, and the next question you kind of already you already answered it I've been applying for an employment but I have not been able to to reach anyone and I just want to go through these suggestions that you made just a while ago and one of them th that I hadn't heard yet is go at two in the morning those odd times when not as many people will will be on there filing and so look for those times you also exactly. said maybe you can ask questions in that chat box there uh, that we showed people on the screen. So little little tips coming out of this form, and that's kind of, like I said when we were talking to Mr. Peters, uh, those are the kinds of things that, that we're looking for, and I'm sure those are the kinds of things that people are watching this, this show for. This next question is for David, and I don't know much about this. What did the CARES Act change? What, what is the CARES Act, first of all? Mm -hmm. uh, actually, the CARES Act is is the uh, you've all heard about the trillion the two trillion dollar package that the uh, uh, that uh, the president and, and the Congress uh, uh, recently enacted uh, as of uh, late late last week. I didn't know <coughs> that if that's what it was called. Okay. Yes, uh -huh. and, and uh, it's it's actually out of that two trillion dollars uh, there there's a, a significant portion of that uh, about three hundred and forty nine three hundred fifty million dollars that's been given, uh, that's been funded to the SBA uh, to, you know, to, to uh, in the form of forgivable loans uh, that, that uh, uh, business owners can, uh, can apply for at, at the banks. And, they, and they're effective Friday, they're gonna be taking loan applications. And this loan is stri based strictly upon how much payroll your business paid uh, over the last 12 months. And then they, they take a factor of that uh, divided by 12 and multiply it by two and a half for you numbers people and that's the amount of the loan that you're eligible for there's no loan there's no loan app i mean there's an app a one page application that you complete at the bank you need to take your payroll records for the for the last uh, 12 uh, months uh, to, to them to substantiate the loan but there's no loan or, there's no loan origination fees there's no personal guarantees there's none of the paperwork and and cumbersome uh, stuff that you have to go through on a conventional or this is meant for speed this is meant for speed yes and 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 uh, uh and once that is application is sent in with when it, supposedly within a matter of days uh, you know maybe five days uh these businesses uh can get that loan the good part about it is if in within that eight week period following the funding of that loan if they use those monies that they got on that loan for paying paying payroll uh, for paying uh, leasehold ob lease obligations for a building or a business lease, uh, any interest that you pay either on a, on a mortgage loan or, or a business loan, or if you pay utilities, uh, and, and that includes water, rent, uh, uh, I mean, excuse me, water, uh, electricity, uh, and it even includes transportation there if you have a business that has shipping and stuff like that. And as long as you, you keep your payroll uh, level, uh, you know, uh, it doesn't go below 75% of what your, your norm was, then that loan is, is completely forgiven. So basically- It means it, you're it, holding on to your employees and this act is saying, absolutely. hey, hold on, we've got you. It's yeah, telling yeah, businesses yeah, yeah. that. It, it's really, it, it's really a, a, an ingenious plan. And we're, we're doing everything that we can to tell people how to go and, uh, and apply for these loans. And uh, th that's the second loan package that came out. And I, want, we, okay. I want to talk about that when we come okay. back right. from okay. commercial, because we got to go to break. Okay. Meanwhile, there's good information coming out of this forum so far come back and we're going to continue our conversation.
Coronavirus, help in the big country, presented by First Bank Texas, continues. All right, well, welcome back to our forum, Coronavirus Help in the Big Country. We are providing information to small businesses and employees and employers on what to do in this time of coronavirus. I wanna welcome back Doug Peters, President and CEO of the Abilene Chamber of Commerce. Also joining us, Mary Ross, Executive Director for Workforce Solutions of West Central Texas, and David Smith, Regional Director of the Texas Tech Small Business Development Center. Again, welcome back uh, for this second segment. And where did we, we, we left off at the uh, at the CARE Act, right? The CARES Act, and um, so wh where, wh well, why do we leave off? Just uh, on the CARES Act, uh, uh, one thing that I like to tell people is on this loan is uh, the, the interest rate on this loan, uh, uh, and for the for the brief period of time that you may have it, is a half a percent. I mean, not not five percent. I mean, a half percent. So it's a very low interest rate. So they're really wanting people to apply for these loans, and they're they're supposed to be very r rapid funding, and uh, uh, so and and these these particular loans are done with the banks, as I wanted wanted to so say. So business needs to, businesses need to be doing this now. What do we do? We do go, we go to the bank. What? What I would suggest that you do is that, that you uh, that you go to our we uh, that our website uh, abilenesbdc.org and we have a face pa uh, Facebook page like everybody does, and they're pretty much the same thing. But on there, if you'll go down and and uh, and, and uh, look at the contact information, there's a, a tab on contact. Uh, there's a phone number there you can call, or the best thing to do would be to go and we, we, we have kind of a form that you fill out, like Mary does, with, a, with a, you know, name, address, email, and phone number. And if you'll give us that contact information, we will have somebody uh, get back in touch with you. And Mary, I'll, you'll be happy to know we hired three employees within the last two days to uh, here at the Texas Tech. Strike those off over uh, there. You know, the folks in Lubbock called and said, we need you to hire some people uh, to go back to work and answer the questions for these folks as these come in. And we're getting ready to, we've, we've been pretty busy with this, uh, but I can only imagine as, 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 as more and more businesses uh, get into a, a, a deeper and deeper financial situation, uh, you, we're gonna be bombarded even more. And we're doing everything we can to get to people and get them the information on how to apply for these loans. Say that website one more time. Okay. It's Abilene SBDC, which is, there it is short up for on your Small screen. Business Development Center dot org. Okay. Abilene SBDC, yeah. which stands for Small Business Development Center dot org. Mary Ross, you said there was another part to this there, CARES Act. There is another piece that I think our people will be really interested in. Uh, there were two things that were added, the pandemic emergency unemployment uh, compensation and pandemic uh, unemployment assistance. Uh, the first one actually extends benefits for an additional 13 weeks. So if you are already been receiving unemployment, you're worried that it's going to run out, then it will extend it another 13 weeks. And then the benefit that many people have heard about and are really interested in is the addition of $600 more a week added to your benefit. And that will go on for another four months or potentially longer. So that's really important because that can make a huge difference in your income. The Pandemic Unemployment Assistance Program is for those folks who traditionally are not eligible for unemployment, people who are self-employed, kind of gig economy workers who don't work for an employer, um, you know, all those hairstylists and barbers and folks that perhaps had to close their business and were wondering what they can do. Well, they can apply for that Pandemic Unemployment Assistance. Uh, if you've already applied and you're receiving benefits of any kind, then the modifications will be made kind of behind the scenes. So don't panic and think you've got to go out and file again to get these um, extended benefits or the additional money. Uh, or if you filed and you were ineligible because you were a self-employed person, again, the Workforce Commission is looking at those applications and you won't have to file again. Um, if you haven't filed, then go ahead and file. Uh, again, indicate your COVID-19 affected and uh, they'll determine your eligibility, but this is a chance for folks who normally wouldn't be eligible to get unemployment assistance. Okay, and uh, Pamela is asking, I have a salon in Abilene. What do I need to do about how can I get a small business loan? Is this the same process that, that Pamela will go through that, that we've been talking about? Yes, there's two, there's two loan packages eligible. I talk, we talked about the CARE Act 
And the one that that's really has people excited is, is the, uh, the first act, the Economic Injury uh, Disaster Loan Application Form. And uh, with that, uh, you know, you, you go to, uh, you actually go to the SBA website, Victor, and, and apply for that on there. And when they, when they first un uh, unveiled this program and, and, and you know, and, and uh, made a, the uh, website available, so many people were going and they had so many documents they were requesting people to, to load up that it crashed the website. Well, they brought in some people from industry uh, uh, nationwide and, and helped them redesign it. It's a much simpler process now. And what you do is, is, is you basically uh, you know, fill out two forms, two forms depending upon which type of business you have. And, and you, you complete these forms and you, you sign them and date them and have them ready to scan. You go back into this website, which is much simpler and has a lot less issues with, with crashing and going down. And, uh, and you complete that, you know, you complete the first two steps of that application. With that said, you can get up to $10,000 for a business, uh, you know, once, you, once you've completed the first steps of that application. And once you receive those funds, that's, that's your money. That, that, that's a, it, it, in, in the law, if you look at the law, it's, it's called a grant. And uh, it's actually, you get to keep the money, whether you get, go through the loan process or not. And uh, I do want to caution people now, now not every business is going to get $10,000 and I, for the life of me, don't know how they're going to determine how much you get, but, but there, is, there is free money out there for businesses uh, just to, you know, to help them do that. Uh, uh, okay. You know. okay. I, I, we have just a little bit of time left and I want to go to, back to the President and CEO of the Abilene Chamber of Commerce, Doug Peters. I want you to leave a message for these small businesses, these employers, and even the employees. What would you like to tell them right now after hearing this information uh, that you've heard today? Well, I want to tell them first and foremost, there's a lot of information out there. Uh, and uh, if you go to businessresourceabilene.com, uh, you'll find uh, aggregated all those uh, resources that we've talked about. We're collecting those, we're verifying those, and we're putting those out there. And that site is on all the time. The real message that I want to uh, leave is uh, we're Abilene, Texas. Um, you know, uh, we have a grit and determination uh, about us. I've only been here for five years, but I've seen it with my own eyes more than once. Uh, if this community cannot thrive in a situation like this, no community anywhere can. So I don't want people to give up. I want them to look for hope. I want them to reach out to others who may be struggling. Uh, and it's my uh, good hope that um, we all come through this uh, as, as strongly as we can and we get back together on the other side and celebrate another Abilene success. All right. Thank you all very much for being part of this panel. You'll want to tell your friends and other business uh, people that you know, come back and watch this. It'll be housed at bigcountryhomepage.com. Thank you for watching.